name is Steve Beck and uh, this is my 65 Shelby. I bought it on my 18th birthday and I'm 61 now so I've had it a long time since before the Mustang and the Shelby hobby really caught you know, momentum and it's been a tremendous car, a life changer. The first big job as a mechanic I ever had, I got hired just because I drove this car to the interview. At, at any rate, it's uh, been a fantastic car, very active in the Shelby American hobby now, past vice president uh, of the Shelby Owners Club of LA. Basically, I've had this car apart and together at least five times. Uh, every time I break it, it goes back together better and it's faster and quicker and easier to drive. The car doesn't have a lot of history other than it did a little bit of PR work for Shelby early on and it's has a few odd features that have been on it since day one. The gills back here that are normally associated with a Mustang and 65 Shelby Mustang, there's, there's no hardware. You can put your hand in there and, and it's, it's been that way since I've owned it. The, the interior panels are uh, competition model panels and they've never been opened up for the factory hardware, the, the vent controls. So that's kind of an odd feature about it, but uh, drove it every day for 21 years. Did some early vintage racing with it, a lot of slaloms, a lot of speeding tickets. Car was registered to my mother for years and years because I couldn't get insurance. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. It's one of 562 built, it's number 258. And it's got the factory wheels on it still and the pretty close to correct paint job on it. Competition front end, which went on the, the R model cars. When, when I bought it, this, the remains of one of these was on it. And a very dear friend of mine who just passed away had a, some new old stock pieces. And so I got this from him and got them when Shelby closed. Uh, the engine is not original and it's kind of a cheater engine. It's making a little more power than the original 306 horsepower. It's not a show car under here, but it's original paint in the engine bay. And, you know, this, this car, it's worth more money with the original engine in it and all of that, and I have all the pieces to recreate that, but you know, they're, whoever gets this car after I'm not on this planet will have to worry about that because this car will probably stay this way for as long as I care to drive it. Uh, these cars came with features that the later Shelbys didn't, special conies and special front end geometry, quick steering package, larger brakes. Detroit locker rear end, uh, most people know all that stuff, but uh, this car still has all of that. And uh, we're out here in the desert making noise with it today. These old cars, you're very involved in driving them. They're heavy, they're manual. So you put both hands on the wheel, big steering inputs, manual brakes, you're jumping up and down on the pedal hard. Modern cars get it done a lot easier and a lot better. You can probably one hand the whole thing and eat a cheese sandwich when you're doing it, but you're not quite as involved. This car, when, when you're after 10 laps, you got to work out, you know, your, your body's involved because it's, it's 2,700 pounds and it feels like you're lifting all 2,700 of them when you turn it through sometimes at low speed. But it does handle very well, it's very predictable. It'll understeer a little bit and then it'll oversteer a lot. You know, that's just how they are. And uh, big long wheelbase, things happen slowly. It's a, it's a treat. I can't believe I've still got it after all these years. I'm 61 years old and I'm still driving my 18, you know, the car I got for my 18th birthday. When I was a kid, my mother worked for a, a doctor that took care of Shelby's wife that delivered his children. Dr. Watson was his name. At any rate, as a nine-year-old, I got to walk through part of the factory. And it was a little guy, and uh, I couldn't see all of it because they wouldn't let me into where they were building them, but I thought they were neat then. And when I turned 18, I had no idea that I'd ever get to have one, but a friend of my older brother's called me up and said that he heard that I was looking for an American car to drive to my first real job, and that he had one of those Shelby things that I want to come by and check it out. And so he had about four cars he was selling, one of them a Boss 302 and one of them this car. And I drove the Boss around because it was newer and in way better condition. And I drove this thing and halfway around the block I went, man, this is the car for me. I could see out of it, the steering was so precise. 
The engine smoked like a train, and when it got to 3,000 RPM, water came out of here because the water pump was shot. But that thing, I fell in love with it. And they said, yeah, what do you want for it? And he said, give me 900 bucks. So I sold my Austin Healey for 600 bucks and paid off the balance in a couple of weeks. And uh, the, the guy's still a buddy of mine and uh, probably regrets selling it. You know, I, I drove it every day to work. I've been in jail twice over going too fast on San Vicente, the local main drag where we live. Uh, used my phone call to get my brother to grab the car before it got impounded, that kind of stuff. Used to chase my buddies around in canyons, still do that. But, uh, started coming out here with the Cobra Club in the 70s and driving around the big track and getting instruction from guys like Dave Drawley and Wayne Richards and uh, Ray Hudson, some real race car driver. And, uh, it's nice to jump into this and do this every once in a while. Makes you feel young, staring through that windshield, and all of a sudden I'm 18 again. <laughs> 